Hey everyone, welcome to my studio. That's right, we're indoors this time. Today I wanted to talk about getting started in figure photography. It's a topic that I see come up a lot on social media, on Reddit, on Facebook. Whenever somebody wants to share pictures of their collection or maybe of their month's figure haul, sometimes they say, I wish I had a better camera or I wish I knew what I was doing in photography. I wish my pictures were better. So if that sounds like you and you don't have a lot of experience in photography and you wish that your photos don't look like they were shot on a potato camera, then this video is going to be for you. I'm going to give you four tips on how you can start improving your figure photos. But before we start on that, I want to talk about what you're actually going to need. So the first thing is obviously you're going to need a figure to take photos of. And the second thing is you're going to need a camera of some kind. Now it doesn't have to be an expensive interchangeable lens camera. A smartphone camera will do just fine. Modern smartphone cameras are actually really good. And then for the purposes of this video, I'm going to do my demos on my own smartphone. And the third thing you're going to need is a willingness to take a few extra steps to go that extra mile before you actually take the shot. And I'm going to show you what I mean in a bit. So let's get started. We're in my kitchen because I want to recreate what most people seem to do when they want to take a figure shot, which is they just unbox it and set it somewhere. In this case, it's on my cutting board. And then, okay, I've moved aside my cooking stuff and my coffee making stuff. So now we're all good to go. It's time to take that snapshot, right? But that photo is just not going to look very good. And this isn't really to call out anybody or to make fun of anybody for taking bad photos. But if we want to improve our figure photos, we need to understand why this approach doesn't work and how we can fix it. Okay, so that first shot I took in the kitchen was not very good. And I think almost everyone's first instinct when they take that shot and they're not happy with it is to say to themselves, oh, if only I had a better camera, then the photo would have come out better. And I'm pretty sure that's the case because the question I get asked by far the most often is what camera do you use? So that's going to bring me to my first tip, which is to hold off on that camera upgrade. Now I'm not going to lie to you and say that I don't think camera gear matters. Um, I think it's very important to have the right tool for the kind of photography that you want to do. But the problem is you can't use that as a starting off point because you're looking at spending a lot of money on something that you have no experience in and you're not going to be able to use to its full potential. The thing about having a better camera is, it's not going to make you a better photographer. Learning and the willingness to experiment and get creative, those things are going to make you a better photographer. So instead of camera gear, what I want to focus on is how to set up a figure shot, how to light it properly, and for that we can just use our smartphone cameras. Now if you can, I would say buy a camera app that gives you manual control over the exposure settings. Um, I've used Camera Plus on iOS, that one's really good. Um, for my Android phone, I already have manual mode built into the default camera app. But once you're able to start thinking about the right approach to photography, then it's gonna help you improve your images across the board way more than a camera upgrade ever could. So I'm going to show you guys a very basic setup that I used when I was just starting out in figure photography. And then hopefully once we're able to establish a baseline look that's good, then we can start getting creative and adding more to our pictures. I put Mercedes in probably the bare minimal figure photography setup. Let me zoom out to show you what that looks like. So what I've done is set up a white sheet of paper and let it curve onto the tabletop and then for our light we're going to be using this desk lamp on the right here. Uh, right now I actually have a studio light going but I'll turn that off before I take the test shot. Now my point isn't that this is the best setup to use or that you should be using something like this all the time. The takeaway is my second tip which is that you need to control what goes into your photo. So if you'll recall from the kitchen shot, even though I cleared off a lot of the random stuff on my countertop, there was still a lot of visual clutter in the photo. You had the granite counter, the cutting board, the seat backs, for example, and those are visual distractions that weren't helping me tell a story or show off the product. 
So when you have something like that in your shot that isn't actively making your photo better, you need to take it out. In that case, I'd rather just have nothing, because if you have nothing in your background, you can't have anything that doesn't belong. Now, obviously, there are plenty of good photos of figures on someone's desk or just in front of anything that isn't a white sheet of paper, but what you need to understand is that these shots are still carefully set up, and these locations are still deliberately chosen. And you can get there by learning to think about what's in your images and what does and doesn't belong. Then when you build up enough experience, you'll be able to strip away anything that doesn't make your shot better. Then what you add back in will be purposeful, and it'll help you tell your story. You can see how much of a difference that makes. It only took a few minutes, a sheet of paper, and a desk lamp. Now, I'm not saying this photo is mind-blowing, but it looks way better than the first shot, and most people are going to think it looks more professional and purposeful. One of the best ways you can improve your figure photos is to improve your lighting. It's way more cost effective than upgrading your camera gear and the skills you learn will help you in every single shot. While we're talking about lighting, I want to tell you about the most fundamental concept in lighting for photography, which is the relationship between the size and distance of your light and the quality of light that you get in your image. So I'm going to show you a demo with this video light here. And you can see it's about the same size as the figure, a little bit smaller. Well, let me zoom in and I want you to pay attention to how the shadows look. So right now I'm holding the light very close to the figure, I'd say about 16 inches. And you can see that the lighting's pretty even and we're getting these soft, aesthetically pleasing shadows and they have a gradient to them. But as I back the light source up, now we're going to see that the shadows are more well-defined, they have harder edges to them. And you can actually use both looks creatively, but I think if you're just starting out in figure photography and you just want a nice flattering look for your figures, then it's best to use as large of a light source as you can and to keep it close to the figure. One more thing I wanted to cover about lighting is the subject of fill lighting. And to show you what I'm talking about, I'm gonna start with the same basic setup as last time, except now I have a work lamp on the right instead of a desk lamp. Then as I zoom in, you can see that the shadows aren't too bad, but we still have parts of the figure on the left that are dark, and we have this kind of distracting shadow in the background. I'm going to first take a photo of this, and we can see what it looks like. Now if we want to even out this left side, what we're going to have to do is add a second light, so that's why I have this lamp here on the left. I'm going to turn that on. Now we can zoom in and see what difference it makes. So now the shadow on the backdrop is pretty much gone and we've lit up this area of the figure. So I'll take another shot for comparison. Now we have a pretty good basic look for our figure photos. And while there are still shadows on there, they're not distracting and they help add some sense of depth to the figure. And we could do all this with just two pretty cheap work lamps and a piece of paper. So now you've seen my basic figure and lighting setup. And again, I want you to keep in mind, this isn't about saying that's the correct way to do things or that you need to be recreating that exact setup. The idea is that you need to be taking control of what's going into your photos and the way that they're lit. And if you can do those two things, then you're going to start seeing real improvements in your figure photography. So now I want to end on my fourth tip, which is try to take a photo every day, whether it's for a week or a month or a couple of months or for a whole year. You're not going to be able to grow as a photographer unless you're taking photos. No matter how much research you do or how much you think about it, you have to actually be doing photography learning mistakes, experimenting, and getting creative in order to get better. And that's definitely the thing that's helped me most in my photography, is doing a project where I took a photo every day for an entire year, no matter where I was, or what I was doing, or what I had to take a photo of. The valuable thing is to just build that into part of your routine, so that you can set aside time every day to take pictures, and then that's how you're gonna develop as a photographer. So hopefully, if you're a complete beginner, 
this video has given you some ideas about how to start and then how to progress your photography. Uh, if you have any feedback for me, I'd love to hear about it in the comments, and I'll also add some links in the description to some resources that you could use if you want to look more into lighting or exposure settings or something like that. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'm going to be doing more videos of this type in the future along with my usual photo walks and stuff like that. So I'll see you next time.